Hey Wargamers, I've been thinking a lot about how to make Tau at least a little bit better. Um, and one thing that stood out to me was kind of the underwhelming nature of support systems, right? We have a couple that we go to almost all the time, uh, but a bunch that are you know really underutilized or almost useless. Um, so there are some support systems right now that are fine, like the counterfire defense system, the drone controller, early warning override, shield generator, velocity tracker. Those are all fine, right? They're not necessarily great, um, but they all have a clear role. They still have some utility, if not uh, consistent value. They, they can at least have situational value and, you know, they work. They're fine. Um, but I think there's room here. I think there's room for more diversity of support systems. I think we could bring in um, not only some additional flavor, uh, but also some cool tactical options that uh, make the uh, commander, you, me, us, uh, make choices about you know what we really want battle suits to do. One of the things about battle suits, of course, is that they are customizable. That's awesome. Um, let's let's customize them even more. Let's give them more roles uh, without giving them you know totally new suits, without giving them totally um, you know different chassis. Like let's let's just see what we can do with existing suits by giving them a greater diversity of support systems. So. Here's some ideas. Um, you know, they're not, it's not a perfect list. It's not, not something that I've been spending my life trying to figure out, but you know, just, I've been thinking about this and I think there's some cool ideas. So let's talk about it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What are some support systems that you think would either be really valuable to, uh, the codex or offer some nice, uh, flavor options? So let's start with the two current support systems that I didn't just mention, the target lock and the multi-tracker. Uh, so the target lock right now is pretty subpar. Uh, really, you can only use it to advance and, and shoot, um, and that's that's okay. But I think it would be better if we just brought it into alignment with the general wording of this type of ability for ninth edition in general and just allow it to ignore all penalties to hit. Um, that does the same thing. It gives it a little bit uh, more value here in terms of ignoring um, the buffs that other uh, units give themselves, right? So like flyers, right? You get, ignore the minus one to hit. Um, this would make it, you know, somewhat redundant with the velocity tracker, but not necessarily, right? You could have a target lock and a velocity tracker on something that could take multiple support systems and have it be super specialized for anti-flyers. And that would be cool, right? That'd be a fluffy, uh, like anti-air suit. To take. Um, and I think that'd be interesting. But in general, just ignoring all penalties seems to make sense for the target lock in a way that just, just makes things a lot cleaner. Um, the multi-tracker, on the other hand, I think is one of the worst support systems uh, since its latest iteration. Um, the whole like firing multiple weapons at a single unit, giving that a bonus if there's lots of if there's lots of models in it or whatever, like just Multi trackers just don't really see like seem like something worth taking ever uh, to me, and so let's fix that. Let's let's take a step back. Say, all right, multi tracker, multiple tracker. Like, what's what's it doing? <laughs> um, and so I think I think switching to something like this, where models equipped with a multi tracker can target units that are within engagement range of friendly Tau Empire units. I think that would be awesome, and actually make the multi tracker a really appealing support system in a lot of cases. Uh, it would allow you to fire into combat, um, right? You could fire while you were in combat and you could also fire into other combats. Um, so this, the idea here is that the multi-tracker allows you to really uh, pick out, you'll pinpoint your targets. And so maybe this is a way to to do that. Like the multi-tracker says, okay, these are the good guys. These are the bad guys. I want to make sure I don't hit the good guys. Let's make it happen. Um, and this does two things, right? Once it, one, it, it actually gives multi-tracker some value, but it also is a huge boon to Tau in close combat. We've talked repeatedly about how Tau needs some presence um, in close combat as, as a means to stay, staying on the board. Um, and having a multi-tracker allow you to fire into combat seems like a reasonable way of doing that in part. 
right? It doesn't allow you to actually fight in combat, but allows you to shoot in combat in the way, you know, kind of like a, a vehicle would or a monster would. Um, and, you know, maybe this is at minus one, maybe it's not, but whatever. Like, if you could give crisis suits the ability to fire into combat, that would be better than not, right? And so then you have a trade-off. You, you want to take a support system that uh, amplifies your normal output or do you want to take one that allows you this flexibility right not necessarily increasing the potency of your weapons but broadening the uh, number of times that you can actually use it and the diversity of targets you can actually fire at um, so you have a you know kind of kind of a trade-off between you know being more more focused or being more broadly valuable um, and then of course there's the general trade-off of a support system versus another weapon but that's true for all of these right so i think integrating this type of functionality into battle suits through the multi-tracker or you know whatever support system we can make something else up something like this i think would go a really long way uh, to helping the faction as a whole when the next codex comes out all right so what about totally new ideas totally original support systems uh let's start with this one here the tactical relay node now this is something that occurred to me after reading the rules for the dogmata and the new sisters uh preview that uh, basically the dogmata works by giving other units uh, the ability to be objective secured said hey that'd be pretty cool if we could do that for crisis suits so here's a way to do that uh <laughs> Uh, right, so a tactical relay node allows, uh, or says units containing at least one model with a tactical relay node gain objective secured. So this is basically like having a comms guy in your unit, right? And and that somehow allows them to be, you know, objective secured. Um, in general, this would allow for better better use of battle suit durability. One of the challenges for Tau right now is that our objective secure units, fire warriors, crude, um are really flimsy, right? And and we're not able to leverage the durability of our beefier units like crisis suits um, or broadsides or you know even riptides uh, to hold objectives. It's really you know you could you know park them on top of an objective, and in fact you should um, in a lot of cases. But still, they're not the ones securing the objective in a lot of cases. So having the ability to take a tactical relay node would allow you to, again, have a trade-off between offense and defense, right? Do you want to be a more offensive unit or do you want to be a more defensive war control unit? Um, and again, that type of trade-off where you have to make a choice, there's no one you know, uniformly correct decision, I think are good game design elements and also a you know relatively accessible way to make these more balanced right if there's a support system here that just is like oh well you'd always take that or um you know this is clearly way way better than any weapon or anything like that then then that's not necessarily that great but uh things where you have a trade off a, a a pretty even trade off i think are good and this type of setup could be considered something in like something in that range you know of course depending on points or whatever so um i would like to see something like this and i think it makes sense too considering the communication and, and technology of battle suits that they would have some ability to be objective secured another new uh i'm, I'm doing air quotes here you can't see but i have i have air quotes around that new uh, another new support system here would be photon casters you know, we have photon casters on uh, hazard suits, so they're not new in that regard. But just bringing photon casters uh, over to the main line support systems, I think, would be really cool. It would be a nice counterpoint to the counterfire defense system, right? Like counterfire defense system makes you better at shooting while being charged, but photon casters make you less likely to actually be successfully charged. And so, yeah, you could stack those to be really anti-charge, but then you're like giving up all these other sweet benefits. So, you know, is that necessarily a problem? I don't know. Um, but I, I just like multiple ways of doing the same thing, like being less chargeable, um, either by being more shooty or by being harder to actually reach, I think would be a nice pairing. Um, uh, it's essentially built in grav inhibitor drone for units that otherwise, you know, wouldn't have access to a grav inhibitor drone. Um, but a better way to mitigate charges, uh, have better bore control, think again is something that would be good and force a trade-off between offensive and defensive capabilities.
And then when I was thinking about all of these different support systems, I realized, you know, this might be a really good opportunity to bring in a little bit more of these other casts, right? We have Ethereals, we have um, Fire Warriors, we have the Air Cast in some ex- to some extent on the tabletop. But what if we really made the Tau Army uh, feel a little bit more like a part of the greater good um, by bringing in a, one support system for each of the other casts that does something cool and something, you know, something reflective of what those other casts do for Tau society as a whole. So this first one here is Earth, an Earth cast relay. Uh, you know, you could think of it as a, as a, you know, an echo of the Earth cast pilot array. So the suggestion here is that models equipped with an Earth cast relay regain one lost wound at the beginning of their movement phase. Uh, obviously this makes battle suits more durable. Right, so if you could if you could pick back a, a wound every turn, or at least on your turn, uh, that would be pretty cool, and it would markedly reduce the need for saber protocols. So it would, it would provide some internalized durability here in a way that would make drones less essential. It would mean drones are less essential. It means saber protocols are less essential, and give battle suits more um, more of a backbone. Right, and that's one of the things we've talked about in the past that. I think is really important for the codex moving forward is this improved durability of battle suits and something like this, it's fluffy, it's cool. And it does that, you know, is, is it uh, amazing? No one wound at the beginning of your movement phase is uh, hardly game breaking, um, but it's something right. And so I think this is, there, there's value here. You could tweak it, right? Maybe it's going to be D3. That seems a little strong, but if it's only on your movement phase and not on your opponent, that could be fine. Um, but this is this is a way to to make them a little bit more durable. In some ways, it internalizes the um, the repair strategy, um, and but in a way that again forces this trade off, right? Do you want to take the support system or do you want to take things that are going to make you more offensive? I like that. I think that that there's value there. Um, and, you know, now that technical drones aren't a thing anymore, why not do this, right? And then the water cast, the diplomats of the uh, Empire. So the water cast uplink, I suggest, allows crude and Vespid units within six inches of a model with a water cast uplink to add one to their leadership and gain objective secured. If the unit already had objective secured, each model in that unit counts as one additional model for determining objective control. So this has some uh, some parallels with the tactical relay and the way that it confers or improves objective secured. Um, but the tactical relay is just for the for that unit. The water cast uplink is for other units, particularly the auxiliaries, Vespid and Crute. Um, so this means that there's more value in those units and offers some interesting gameplay in the way that. Crute, um, Crute can be more impactful as objective secured units. Uh, and Vespid actually gain that functionality altogether in a way that, you know, you could have some crisis suits on the back line and have a Vespid unit drop in on top of them and boom, now you have objective secured in the back line. And then finally, the air cast, the, the pilots of the empire. Um, how would we integrate them better into the army? Of course, we already have things like the sun shark and the razor shark where those are piloted by aircast, but is there a way to make those units a little bit better? Is there a way that we can uh, have them feel like a, you know, part of the greater whole a little bit more? Uh, yeah, why not? So like, what if the aircast transponder allowed aircraft to reroll hits against targets that are visible to a model with an aircast transponder, right? This allows you to essentially call in an airstrike to have your battle suits be able to communicate with their partnering aircraft and uh, provide those aircraft with some information, right? Uh, in a way that makes those aircraft more valuable, right? So why not, you know, take uh, a bunch of Remora, a bunch of Sun Shark, a bunch of Razor Shark, and then have a aircast transponder or two on the board at the beginning of the game? Uh, you know, I think this would be a cool way to kind of just make those aircraft more interesting, um, especially because, you know, they don't have a ton of use right now. You know, you give up so much for an aircraft. Maybe we should give a little back to those aircraft in the way of of a transponder by, you know, just having a heart-to-heart talk about where the enemy is and um, 
you know, how, how to fire your missiles at them. Like, yeah, we could do that, right? <laughs> um, and again, this is a trade-off with your output on the battle suit and a trade-off with your, and the, and the output of some other unit, right? So you, this means that the battle suit itself has to basically say, do I want to be better or do I want to help my friends be better? And I think that fits with Empire, right? Like that's kind of for the greater good, right? And so this type of trade-off does force a decision. You have to, you know, try to choose. Are are you getting enough from the transponder to justify its cost? Um, because there is an opportunity cost associated with the transponder versus something like um, advanced targeting system. So I think this could be a fun way to integrate the aircast into your battle, your battle suit army uh, a little bit better. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think there are some of these support systems that are good? Do you think some of them are too good? Do you think some of them are total garbage? Uh, let me know in the comments below. And uh, if you have your own ideas about the different types of support systems that we could see, uh, you know, very wish listy video, but still, uh, it's fun to talk about, right? So put them in the comments and we'll have a discussion. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy wargaming. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. This channel is made possible by my supporters over on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, consider joining our community over there. Really, the, the support means more to me than you realize. Um, so, special thanks to Tao Oswell, Stephen Cowan, Jared Egler, Scott Heater, Michael Byrne, Robbie Goodwin, Chris Kessler, Durza, Zealous Brimstone, Ever Keller, Drew Pralley, Ruger, Jose Gomez, A Little Pink Monster, and Benaby Jones.